Well, good morning, friends, and welcome to our first Sunday in November. We are in the season of remembrance. Next week will be obviously Remembrance Sunday. But this week we are reminded of those who have gone before us, the great communion of saints, as we celebrate on the 1st and the 2nd of November, All Saints and All Souls Day. And for opening words before our first hymn are these. Morning sings, the dew is glistening, earth is warm and wet with rain. Morning glory signals praises, light awakes the world again. God is with us. Amen. And our first hymn is Ye Holy Angels Bright. Continue to praise God in our opening prayers. So let us pray. Almighty God, you are a father of a great family, a family made up of people from every age, drawn from the four winds and from every continent and island. Your community transcends time and space. Being still unknown to us, yet known to you. Bright beings of superior powers and human beings blessed with hope join in your great service. And within your family, each has a place in your love and no one is neglected or overlooked. Your care extends to every member and every member plays a part in your perpetual praise. Earthly and unearthly music blend, nature and grace combine, earth and heaven agree within the bright orbit of your shining. Yet we confess to you, almighty God, before the company of heaven and to each other, that we have sinned through our own fault. We've not always honoured the memory of those whom we have loved and lost. We have despaired of life without them, instead of believing in the communion of saints. 
And may we, with all your saints on earth, though sing your praises in concert with the saints in heaven, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we have our two Bible readings I've chosen for today. The first one is from Hebrews chapter 11 and the start of chapter 12. Then we turn to the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson and Jephthah, about David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength and who became powerful in battle and rooted foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released, so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Some faced jeers and floggings, and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in the deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith. Yet none of them received what had been promised since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they become made perfect. Therefore, since we are all surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that is so easily entangles us, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of, of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Amen. The second reading is the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus saw the crowds and went up a hill where he sat down. His disciples gathered round him and he began to teach them. True happiness. Happy are those who know they are spiritually poor. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Happy are those who mourn. God will comfort them. Happy are those who are humble. They will receive what God has promised. Happy are those whose greatest desire is to do what God requires. God will satisfy them fully. Happy are those who are merciful to others. God will be merciful to them. Happy are the pure in heart. They will see God. Happy are those who work for peace. God will call them his children. Happy are those who are persecuted because they do what God requires. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Happy are you when people insult you and persecute you and tell all kinds of evil lies against you because you are my followers. Be happy and glad for a great reward is kept for you in heaven. This is how the prophets who lived before you were persecuted. Amen. And now we sing our second hymn, which is Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken. Mm -hmm. 
glorious things of thee are spoken, Zion, city of our God, he whose word cannot be broken, form thee for his own abode, on the rock of ages founded, what can shake thy sure repose? With salvation's walls surrounded, thou mayest smile at all thy foes. See the streams of living waters springing from eternal love. Well, supply thy sons and daughters, and all fear of want remove. Who can faint while such a river ever flows their thirst to assuage? Grace which, like the Lord, the giver, never fails from age to Round each habitation hovering, see the cloud and fire appear for a glory and a covering, showing that the Lord is near, thus deriving from their banner, light by night and shade. By day, safe they feed upon the manna which he gives them when they pray. Savior, if of Zion City, I through grace some member am, let the world. Today our message is, who is the church twinned with? Over the years there have been great many comedy duos, but often what makes them great is the contrast between them. The straight man and the funny man, the tall one and the short one. Whether it be like Cannonball or Morecambe and Wise, it is that contrast that blends together that makes them so successful. It's sometimes are even more amazing twins where one in comparison to the other seems almost too unimaginable to be true. If you've ever driven on the A47, I guess all of us have, of course, the April Straits are part of the A47. Take the bit from Peterborough to Leicester, the other end of the A47. You go for a hamlet called Whitlow. You'll see a sign saying, Welcome to Whitlow. As you pass through perhaps no more than a dozen houses, and a man and his dog may be walking down the road. And very soon you'll see another sign saying, thank you for driving safely through Whitlow. And below it it says, twinned with Paris. And whether that's Paris, Texas, or the Paris in France, it's still an amazing twin for a tiny hamlet. In the season of all souls and all saints, I want to remind us of this amazing twinning that the church here on earth, often that we are struggling and we find faith can be hard in various ways, but we're joined by a much greater and mightier twin, the church triumphant above. But help us understand this twinning, 
We must see the church not as buildings or structures, but where the people of God meet, the body of Christ together. Where we meet in a building, or perhaps today digitally online. It's where we come together for worship, teaching and fellowship. Where our gifts are used and valued. And where we are a launching pad for mission. Howard Belbin, a former principal of Cliff College, once said the local church is to be a testing ground for love, where we explore together the meaning of the cross. On the cross, we see God's love at its most expressed. And where we too must be a church as a factory of love. And sometimes to be a factory of love, so like a very big project, like launching a new power plant somewhere, like maybe building Sizewell C. But it is more on a simpler level. And to do what we do in our local context, we know that we are strengthened by the fact we do not battle alone. Good support from our vast and mighty twin which also seems at times to be too good to be true. But we are supported by such a great cloud of witnesses, the church triumphant in heaven, which we celebrate at this time. Firstly, it reminds us, whatever hardships we face, over the last 2,000 years and more, others have faced much greater hardship and distress. Remember when Sylvie read to us that first reading, that full list of people who endured such. And yet for their faith, we are reminded that this world was not worthy of them. And they refused release to win a resurrection to a better life. And yet for all these faithful people of the past, we may feel that God has shortchanged them somehow. Because in verse 39, we read, yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what they were promised. We know in our world, often people and maybe politicians promise all sorts of things and quite often fail to deliver. And we feel let down or shortchanged. But then we get this phenomenal promise. God has provided something better for us that only with us will they be made perfect. And this promise that God has provided something better for us and with us reminds us that those who have gone before us, those that we love and have influenced our lives, not only are receiving everlasting life and joy and vindication for their faith, but also that for them, it would only be totally come true when they shared that promise with us. If we look back upon my life, I think about those who shaped me to be the person that I am and the Christian faith that I have come to accept and love. I think of my grandparents who provided me with much love, but also the foundation of the Christian faith. How I was blessed at a normal county school, not a church school, to have two Christian school teachers in my formative years at primary school and their passion for the Bible that touched me in so many ways. Others can think about maybe youth club leaders, Sunday school teachers, those who went the extra mile for us. Those who part times that perhaps maybe gave and gave again and wore themselves out did it out of love that those in their care also might one day accept the faith that was precious to them and imagine for them when we see them one day face to face and all their prayers have been answered i guess if you are like me there are many people that i long to see once again but the thing is i know that their prayers round the Father's throne of grace are still supporting me. That amazing twinning 
of the church on earth with the church above. Because we are, as Hebrews reminds us, supported by such a great cloud of witnesses. This year we know has been an Olympic year. Paris, again, the famous twin town with Whitlow was somewhere in Leicestershire. And of course, we think of the Olympic Games. To me, the one sport is athletics, the 100 metres in the Olympic Stadium. An image that the writer of Hebrews has here is of the ancient games in Greece. Where to compete, you had to compete naked in those days. You throw off everything, every encumbrance that got in the way. And therefore, you ran with perseverance the race that was marked out for you. We might think of the modern Olympics. Great Olympians like Usain Bolt winning the 100 metres in the world's fastest time. Fixing his mind on getting to the tape in a record time. Yet we are also in this picture. We start our race. Our aim is not the tape, but Jesus. The prize not a garland that fades or even a gold medal but eternal life with God. And just as sprinters like Usain Bolt, as we know, feed off the crowd, give them a bit extra on the track. Or a full house in a football stadium acts like the 12th player for the team. And so does the church of God in heaven inspire us as we run our straight race, especially when the way ahead seemed grueling or hard. And my final point for the season of all saints and all souls is this, that when we think of numbers here on earth, numbers do not really matter at all because the church is always full. I think of a dear soul called John Hilton, who's one of my circuit stewards when I came to Deerham many years ago. John was one of the readers of the circuit plan. And John will go anywhere. He's one of these people who love taking services. And our smallest chapel, indeed it's still going, is Garvardstone, now in the central Norfolk circuit, on a Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening. There have been occasions when I preach there to just one in the congregation. I believe that the church is still going. And one week I saw John on the Monday morning and said, how did it go at Garvardstone on Sunday? We had a full house, my boy, he says. I thought a full house, often five or six, might be the largest number you would get at Garverston. A full house, John, I said. Every seat was taken, said John. I looked in disbelief. And John would say, well, the rest were filled, he said, with the saints from heaven. For indeed, you felt their presence every time you entered that small chapel in Garveston. And when you met, it was not just with those who you faced from the pulpit. So friends, we are twinned with something great. Indeed, we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Amen. I mentioned the chapel of the Central Norfolk Circuit. Our next hymn was written by a supernumerary in the Central Norfolk Circuit, who also was a candidate from Akel, Rosemary Wakeland, someone who many of us will know very well. And our next hymn to him that she has written and appears in our Singing the Faith hymn book, which is one human family God has made and all for each to care. i 
not a part we stand away of earth, but still ahead the Christ leaves on and calls his church to move. From love of power to power of love to give the word to all the world, to trust the love that God could death and sign the city wall. And now we brave enough to join with that great company that cost more less than all we have and are of hope to be. The bitter cup of human sin to drink a clear wood of a mind that said his love outside the wood to all the crucified. The him who plants us for his own to share his pain and grief, to bear the scars that stop us is the form of God belief. As God my soul, the living Christ, who lives to the world, we tell a world. In love, we shine to share the timeless joy of God. As we respond to God's word, we pray for the needs of others. So let us pray. Glory to you, O Lord, from the whole company of heaven, from the saints in glory, and from your people on earth. Father, we give you thanks that in the darkness of this world, your saints shine. May we with them have a share in your everlasting kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We give you praise for holy men and women who have been an inspiration to us, to those who set an example to follow. May your church be inspired by their lives. Seek to keep before it their dedication and to follow after their vision. We pray for all who are seeking to fulfil their vocation. For all who seek to quietly dedicate themselves to you and your glory. Lord of the saints, strengthen our faith. And blessed are you, Lord our God. You have called us to a world full of good things. We thank you for all who have set out to improve our world. We pray for those who work in conservation and those who care for others. For those who have sacrificed themselves in the service of others. And for those who seek to live simply and others may simply live. Lord of the saints, Strengthen our faith. And we give you thanks for those who have taught us the faith, for those who gave generously and sacrificially for us, and for all who have led us in the ways of goodness and truth. We pray that our homes and our work may be places of holiness, that we may be an example to others. Lord of the saints, strengthen our faith. And we give thanks today for all your saints, and we join our praises with theirs. Lord of the saints, strengthen our faith. Amen. And we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For nine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Today our final hymn is for all the saints who from their labours rest.
Go out and be blessed. Be blessed by the kingdom of God, which is inverting the ways of this world, turning everything upside down, showing love to a world of hate, bringing unity to a world of division, and bringing love which lasts forever. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us during this time of all saints and forevermore. Amen.